in, you start to receive, and at first, you have him. But if you keep going, pretty soon, he has you. And it's not a bad thing. If, um, if you're out of control, but God has you, and you're in his control, are you really out of control? <laughs> no. It's a bit like normally when we drive, I drive the car. And it feels weird when Carol drives. <laughs> because, I mean, she's, yeah, she's, she's a good driver. She's never had a speeding ticket, never had a parking ticket, never had any kind of ticket in all of her life. So, all right, she's a better driver than I am, I guess. But it just still feels different when she drives. Well, the car's not out of control. It's just that someone else is driving. That's how it is with the Holy Spirit. When He takes over, you're not out of control. It's just someone else is at the control. Someone else is driving. But it's God, the Holy Spirit, and He wants to bless you. Now, don't get hung up on that, because it's not a permanent thing. But in the Word of God, we have examples where people were were taken over by the Holy Spirit briefly to teach them something or make a statement and then they'd revert to normal so we have to have room in our doctrine for something to happen like what happened to Paul the Apostle do right? you think he was blinded uh, and that was his choice I don't think God asked permission for that one do you? He just came in power and blinded him. He fell to the ground. Boy, he learned something in those next three days, didn't he? You better just be careful when you start messing with God. Because that was Jesus' part. And so we have the grace of the Lord Jesus, and the love of God, and the friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is just the most wonderful friend. Catherine Kuhlman is one of my heroes. Years ago she would say, the Holy Spirit is more real to me than any human being. And I was like, oh, how could she say that? I mean, what, what must that be like? And I was trying to, oh, gosh, I want more of that. I want more of that. Then you'd read about Smith Wigglesworth. He's, he's another one of my heroes. And he would say, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. <laughs> and I'd read that and go, oh, my goodness. Isn't that an awesome statement? How would you like to be a thousand times bigger on the inside? We, we've only just begun to get to know the Holy Spirit. One of the most powerful meetings I've ever been in was in Colombia, in Bogota, Colombia. And a dear man there named Ricardo Rodriguez, and we were at his pastor's conference, and the, the whole meeting just was absolutely off the chart. And his statement over and over again is this, uh, Spiritu Santo mi amigo, you know, the, the Holy Spirit, my best friend. And he lives by that. And he came through all the kidnappings and the threats in his life and all this kind of stuff and it really drove him into the secret place and so when he says the Holy Spirit is my best friend that's not just a cliche for him it is absolutely true and my goodness did his best friend ever show up in those meetings with about 15,000 pastors just getting absolutely wrecked <laughs> in the anointed what he's giving us is this unbelievable package of Jesus Christ, Savior and Lord. He takes care of your sins and He gives you the gift of eternal life. Are you happy to have the gift of eternal life? Isn't it wonderful? But it isn't just you're going to live forevermore in a place that's like England at its best or something. No, you're, you're going to live in a place that is absolutely the kingdom of love and the King himself, and the Father of it all, is actually the kindest, nicest person imaginable. God the Father. And the other thing is, it's, it's not going to be distant. Like, they'll be way over there, way over there. No, starting now, 
The Holy Spirit is with us and in us. Right here tonight. We don't have to wait for that. We have the, the first installment and the down payment of all this right here among us now. And we're, we're still talking about it. Things that happened 15, 16 years ago or more. They were so uh, impacting that we can't get over it. We can't get over it. And I don't want you to ever forget that touch from heaven that you got. But I want you to know there's a whole lot more that's just about ready to come. I think we, we had a prophecy in the late 80s that said there, there was going to be a wind that blows. And it would blow hard and a lot of good stuff would happen. But then there would be a second wind that would blow that would be much more powerful. If you didn't get on board with the first wind, you probably couldn't get on board with the second wind. It was going to be very, very strong. And we are in position now for that second wind. I just said earlier, it is about to rain very hard in the spirit. And when it does, all that we saw in 94 and since um, is going to be eclipsed big time with what God does. It will be a suddenly, and it will be globally. There's just so many people, and it may be, you know, a lot of darkness off to the side somewhere, but I'm telling you what, the glory of God is going forth like, um, it's just the church's finest hour. So it's not something we can hype and say, come on, get ready, get ready. You know, I don't know how to tell you to get ready, except to say, Start spending time with him. Spend time in the secret place. When he speaks to you about stopping this or that, putting away sin from your lives, listen to him. Pay attention. He's doing it for your own best interest. But he's calling us to himself as a holy people with the, with the privilege and the opportunity to, to actually be the bride of Christ. And... That is a place of privilege and influence and uh, just just an amazing place. You don't want to miss it, do you? Meanwhile, we get to tell all our friends about it. And so you don't have to go and say, you know, turn and burn and become miserable <laughs> like me or you're going to burn in hell forever. That's not our message, is it? No, we're saying, hey, come on. I want you to get in on this blessing it's of Father, time. Son, and Holy Spirit. It's life, it's peace, it's joy, it's fun, it's happiness. My goodness, we've had more fun than I've ever had in all my life, and we've had it in church. And some of the funniest things we've seen the Holy Spirit do, it's just been amazing. I mean, you, you get together with leaders and talk about the funniest things that they've seen that the Holy Spirit do to people is just so hilarious. Uh, this one friend of ours, his name is John Sanger, he came, actually he didn't come, he was dodging it, but he came to a meeting we did one day in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he got blasted, I mean blasted, and he, he was running around the room backwards. And you try to do that, man. just try to do it. He's running around the room backwards and um, and, and, and I guess he finally fell over and he soaked for a while. Well, he went home to his church that weekend, so I can't remember if it was Friday or Saturday, but anyway, Sun 